If you're not familiar with any of my research, uh, I look into the King James Bible specifically for numeric patterns, and that might sound odd to anybody new who's watching because English is not the original language, as I know. I've heard it a million times. The reason I look at the King James Bible for numeric patterns is because of how many patterns show up so perfectly in the Bible that make no sense how they could be there otherwise, other than God doing it. And the one I'm going to show you today is actually not one, but three. It's a trilogy of patterns, and I'm calling it the golden sequence because that's what it is. It is a sequence of perfection in the most printed Bible in history. And that's something else that you need to consider as well when it comes to the King James Bible. We're talking about, you know, Bibles being printed jot and tittle the same, one after the other a billion times, versus handwritten copies that were always imperfect. How many people had their hands on a full copy of the Bible, you know, 1,500 years ago? Versus today, everybody has a Bible on their bookshelf or they can go get one if they want, unless they're living in a country, of course, where there's persecution. But you look at it from God's perspective, you start to see that this was intentional. So what is the golden sequence? The golden sequence deals with these three numbers, with 980, 1,554, and 5,929. Those three numbers give you the most simple and perfect pattern in the Kingdom's Bible. What are those three numbers and what do they represent? The first one is 980, which represents how many times Jesus shows up in the King James Bible. Jesus shows up 980 times, which is 70 times 7, plus 70 times 7. Now, before I explain the significance of 70 times 7, let me first say that if you're going to pull up a Bible search program to fact check me, depending on what program you're using, you could get a count of 983, you could get a count of 984, uh, you could get a count of 973. It depends on how your uh, search program is set up. But this is looking at every single mention of Jesus when it's referring to Jesus Christ. So there are three anti-mentions of Jesus in the New Testament. One of them is in Colossians 4.11, talking about justice. He was named Jesus, which is called justice. And the other two are referring to Joshua from the Old Testament in Acts 7.45 and Hebrews 4.8. Those mentions of Jesus, because Joshua is translated as Jesus, literally spelled the exact same way in Greek, those mentions of Jesus are referring to Joshua. So if we remove those anti-mentions, we're left with all the mentions that are pure referring to Jesus Christ. And if you're getting the 984 count, you're getting also the sorcerer from Acts 13.6, Bar Jesus, which is obviously not talking about Jesus Christ. If you get rid of all those anti-mentions, either about three or four of them, depending on your search program, you're going to end up with 980, which is 70 times 7 plus 70 times 7. Now, 70 times 7 is the exact equation that Jesus gives to Peter in the context. It represents complete forgiveness of sins. Because Peter asked Jesus, how many times am I to forgive my brother? Seven times? Jesus says, I say, not unto thee until seven times, but until 70 times seven. That's how many times Jesus shows up in the Bible. And this pattern actually goes deeper. If you go to kjvcode.com, uh, it's going to look like this on the home page. First of all, the, the golden sequence, the uh, first one is here, the second one is here, and the third one is right here. Or you can just go to explore in the, in the menu, and then you can click the golden sequence, the very first link. And you're going to get these three patterns. These are the golden sequence patterns. The first one here is Jesus. Now, it's not just the fact that it shows up 70 times 7 times plus 70 times 7 times in the Bible. It's the fact that he shows up 7 times 7 times in the odd books and in the even books. Every other book. So if you open this up, you'll see in Matthew, in Luke, Acts, 1 Corinthians, and all these blue, skipping over every other book, all the way to Revelation, there are 70 times 7 mentions of Jesus in the odd books and 7 times 7 mentions of Jesus in the even books, which at first might seem not too extraordinary until you look at the difference between the two of how odd books have 117,000 words, even books have 62,000, almost, almost half the amount, which means there should logically be almost double the amount of t mentions of Jesus in the odd books than in even books, not the exact same amount. Now, if you go through these this image gallery, first of all, you can see the screenshot proof 
of Jesus in both the odd and the even books. Look at, look at the, um, the difference. This is how many words are in the odd books. So Matthew, Luke, Acts, 1 Corinthians. This is how many words are in the even books. Mark, John, Romans, all the way to the book of Jude. That's a pretty big difference. And when you look at the, these charts, it shows you how many times, for example, down here, the first word on this list is, is which, W-H-I-C-H. Look at the massive difference between odd books and even books. The word which is mentioned 1,081 times in odd books and 473 times in even books. Literally over double the amount of times. Same thing with all these other words. I mean, even the word God, 860 times in odd, odd books, 494 times in even books. That is a massive difference. And then when you get to Jesus, perfect. 70 times 7 mentions in both. Here's a, a more spread out chart where you can see even more words. So that's the first um, pattern in the sequence, in the golden sequence. The second, let me go to the bottom here, is this one right here, Jesus plus Christ. Jesus plus Christ gives you 777 plus 777 mentions in the Bible. 980 mentions of Jesus. So we just saw that 980 count. Now all we're doing is adding all the mentions of Christ. Jesus Christ. Jesus, the most, the, the entire Bible, the most important word of that Bible, arguably, you know, besides maybe Father, is Jesus. What perfectly pairs with Jesus other than Christ? Jesus Christ. So all mentions of Jesus and all mentions of Christ, that's including uh, all the mentions of uh, Christ in the word Christians, because Christian is a follower of Christ. That's why his name is in the word. There are 777 plus 777 mentions of Jesus and Christ in the King James Bible. So you see how it's a sequence, because it started with Jesus. But now when you simply add Christ, it gives you another perfect number, a triple rep digit number of 777, giving you an average of 777 mentions of both Jesus and Christ. And by the way, if you are not familiar with the Bible, the number seven is the number of perfection of God in the Bible, well established from Genesis to Revelation. It even describes Jesus himself having seven eyes in the book of Revelation with seven horns, which are the seven spirits of God, which go out to all the earth. So the number seven, it points to God. He says in Psalm 12, verse six, the words of the Lord are pure words, as silver tried in a furnace of earth, purified seven times. His words are purified seven times. Okay, so here on kgvcode.com, you can see this. You can go through the screenshots if you want. Um, there's the proof with the Bible program with the anti-mentions excluded from the count. So there you have it. The last pattern in this trilogy, in this sequence, Jesus plus Christ plus God plus Father. When you add Jesus plus Christ plus God plus Father, who is seated on the right hand of God? Jesus Christ. Who is God? God is the Father. God the Father, Jesus Christ, His Son. Jesus plus Christ plus God plus Father it gives you a total of 77 times 77 mentions. Again, if you go to KGB code, let me quickly go back to the golden sequence, the very last one. So if you open this, you'll see that God and Father combined. So this is looking at the capitalized mentions of God and all the capitalized mentions of Father, pure mentions. It gives you 625 times seven mentions, which is actually incredibly interesting in itself because Jesus shows up 625 times in the Gospels. That's how many times he shows up in the Gospels, 625. So God and Father show up 625 times seven times in the entire Bible. Combined with Jesus and Christ showing up 777 plus 777 times gives you a total of 77 times 77. So Jesus by himself, Jesus with Christ, Jesus with Christ, God and Father, gives you perfection to the uttermost with God's perfect number in the most printed Bible in history. 
feel free to look it up. Feel free to download the search files where you can simply download this. You can open it. You can open it directly in King James Pure Bible Search. If you have that software, it's free. So if I open this from my browser, it'll open it up for me where we can see that God, Father, Jesus Christ, removing all the anti-mentions, gives us a total in the entire Bible of 5,929. This is including every single mention. Jesus, God, Christ, and Father in the entire Bible. That's real. That exists. If you have never been born again, if you have never been saved, if you're looking at this as a lost person, as, as someone who's never come to Jesus to save you from your sins, today is the day of salvation. This book is perfect, and you've just seen the tip of the iceberg. Well, maybe you've seen the very bottom of the iceberg before you saw the tip of it. But if you go through the series, especially the last episode of Macro Patterns, episode 7, you can see a much greater expanse of patterns. It's not just these three. These are just the most simple and straightforward, streamlined and in your face type of patterns. Like how could that possibly be happening with the most perfect words of the Bible? So Jesus Christ is real. He is a real person. He is God in the flesh. And he ascended to the right hand of God after he rose from the dead. He is there right now in heaven. And if you call out to him in prayer from your heart, if you call to Jesus Christ, he is the Savior. He will give you everlasting life. I pray that today you make that choice because he shed his perfect blood for you. When you, the Bible says you put your faith in his blood, you are cleansed from all unrighteousness because the righteousness of Jesus Christ is imputed onto you. Which means you are no longer approaching God in your body of the sins of the flesh. You are approaching God by the righteousness of Jesus Christ and what he did for you. Because he sacrificed himself for you. We didn't deserve him. He didn't need to do anything. There was no one was forcing him. But he chose and God sent him and he obeyed. And he went to the cross because he loved us. There God demonstrated his love for us. Here God has demonstrated that that testimony, the Bible, is 100% true. People like to say there's mistranslations in this Bible. Every single one of them are coming up with that from the opinion of scholars, opinion of men, who all think there's errors in every single Bible that they read. But God said his word is pure. Every word of God is pure. And he said he would preserve his word forever. And he said there's a book in the end times that men can seek out of and read. That book of the Lord is among us. Call upon the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved, even if it's just one person seeing this. I pray that you will take this to heart, that you will be sincere, that you'll go into a place where nobody is watching you, and you will pray to the Father, you will pray directly to the Son yourself and ask Him for grace. Ephesians 2, starting in verse 5, says, Even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ, by grace ye are saved, and hath raised us up together, and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. These are real words from the real living God, that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. 
We're saved through faith by His grace. Nothing our hands can do can save us. No amount of good deeds, no amount of morality, but Jesus paid the price for you on the cross to give you eternal life because He loves you. Turn to Him and you will be born of the Spirit. When I was all alone by myself, 2014, went into a, I watched a five-minute clip of a sermon, went to the other room, fell to my knees, asked the Lord Jesus to save me, and the amount of peace that flooded my soul was so overwhelming, I started crying, tears of joy. I didn't know what was happening, but I knew I needed a Savior, and I knew I was going to hell without Him because I was a sinner. Why would I deserve heaven? When Jesus Christ died for my sins, and I didn't receive it, I didn't receive His free gift. What else is there for God to offer you if you won't receive His only begotten Son? Thank you for watching, and I, I pray, I'm praying for you. I pray, I pray for the people who watch my videos. So I hope this was a blessing, and we'll see you in the next video. For thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I, even I, will both search my sheep and seek them out.